College Street Cafe in Clinton presents Local Arts. The little village of Dowlgeville is known throughout the world for African violets. Horticulturist Lyndon Lyon developed 800 varieties during his lifetime, and most of the African violets seen today are varieties he bred. The tradition is carried on by his grandson, who tells us his grandfather's passion began with a single leaf. Well, his niece, uh, he went up to visit one day, was growing an African violet on the windowsill, and he was curious about this whole thing, and he asked her uh, what she was doing. She said, I have a leaf, and I've got it in some soil, and it's going to make a brand new plant again, and he kind of had a disagreement with her. He didn't believe that it could. He said, no, it would. She said to him, well, take it home and try it out for yourself. And he brought it home and watched the, the leaf grow into a plant over time, was amazed by this. And then eventually he got hooked into growing violets. He picked up some other varieties out there in the world, started crossing. He had always had an interest in genetics. He had done some breeding of other things in the past. He learned that there was a race going on for the first double pinks. So he jumped into the race kind of late, and little did he know that he would win that race and become famous practically overnight. I believe it was 1954, he took the first plants to African Violet Society of America Convention was in St. Louis that year. He brought them, displayed them, it caused quite a stir. People were standing all around in big crowds and he was amazed. And he actually sold one of those varieties to an Ohio greenhouse. The name of the plant it was um, Double Bountiful and the Ohio greenhouse bought it and called, renamed it Ohio Bountiful. And, and he sold them that plant for $1,000. That guy took the leaves and sold them for $10 a piece. And then from that point, there was no looking back. He just started building greenhouse after greenhouse after greenhouse, and he just became, Dalgero became famous because of that. Yeah, the, the Violet Festival has a theme this year, the then and now. And the, 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 the then was focusing on my grandfather and his double pinks. And now it's on uh, some of my new stuff and these little, um, Teeny Bopper here is one of the tiniest violets that there ever has been, and uh, they seem to be coming back into popularity right now. They're cute with people having trouble growing a lot of stuff under lights or the expensive lights and heating up big rooms. They can grow these easily on just a narrow little windowsill and then just line them up right across the windowsill and, and have a lot of different colors and stuff. And have a whole collection in a little space. Yeah, have a whole collection in a little space, yep. Well, it is a challenge. Some of the other hybridizers feel like we've kind of reached a plateau. Although we've been lucky here, we're still able to come up with a lot of new varieties. Uh, we're putting out approximately 15 varieties per year, and we've got some new and interesting things this year, some things I'm really excited about next year. Some of the pinwheel striped violets, some of the fantasy type flowers, some more micro mini miniature violets, and we've got a lot of stuff, and it's nice to see that we're able to still produce something different because we really thought we were at a standstill. Visit Dulgeville next weekend for the annual Violet Festival, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's a craft and flea market, live entertainment, flower show, and art show. On Saturday, there's a parade at 10 a.m. and fireworks Saturday night at the annual Dulgeville Violet Festival, June 12th through 14th.